This is a short presentation on owls of the Mendocino Coast, aimed primarily at people who are participating in owling as part of the Christmas bird counts, but it's also useful if you're just out in the woods or outdoors and happen to hear something and you want to know what it is. This is aimed mainly at the owls that winter here along the Mendocino Coast, and it turns out we have several species of them, including this little guy. That's a call you can hear right about this time of night when the sun is just about to set. And that is the northern pygmy owl. They're fairly abundant owls here on the coast, and they're found in a fairly good variety of habitats. Uh, from the deep woods, the conifer woods, to the mixed forest, uh, they frequent backyards and brush patches. They roam around quite a bit. They're very aggressive. Uh, hunters, they will regularly take prey that's much larger than they are. And as you can see from this photo, they're active in the daylight as well. This is a picture Roger took earlier this year at Big River in the middle of the afternoon. They don't usually vocalize in the daytime except just before sunset and right after sunrise. This is their usual song, that trilling call that I had played. That I recorded that in my backyard. That is, I believe, a territorial call that they make when they're moving around and looking for new territory. I typically hear that in November and early December and not at other times of the year. Uh, their more usual call, or their song actually, sounds like this. And the thing to notice there is that it's metronomic. The spacing uh, between notes is the same all the way through. They don't vary their uh, pattern and they don't vary their pitch. So they have a very monotonous call and it's really distinctive that way. A kind of a little toot that they repeat generally one every two seconds. Sometimes when they're really agitated, they will do a double toot. Uh, but again, the spacing between each of the double, each of the pairs of toots is exactly the same and that will distinguish them from one of the other small owls. So listen for that one. Uh, you can hear that in your backyard. They can come right into town uh, and they're fairly abundant here. So right at sunset and a little bit after, this is another sound that's very, very commonly heard here. Four note call. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, the classic hoot owl. Yep, that's the great horned owl. Uh, very abundant owls. They're large, aggressive birds. They stay paired up pretty much all year long and the pairs talk to each other. Uh, pretty much all the time, except maybe when they're when the female is sitting on eggs. Uh, so you can hear them vocalize almost any time of the year here, and including in the middle of winter. And they are quite territorial, so they will respond if you play a call in their territory. They'll call right back. This is what a pair of them sounds like when they're talking to each other. So the male starts off there with the deeper pitch and the female replies with that higher pitched call. That's, uh, that's the pattern for great horned owls. The males have a deeper pitch call and they often talk to each other and get pretty excited about it. Well, let's move into nighttime. Now. This is an owl that is only active when it's fully dark. That is the northern sawhead owl, and they are a strictly nocturnal small owl of the deep conifer woods. You won't find these in town or in open or even mixed woods. They are a bird of the conifer forests. 
But in those conifer forests, they're very abundant. Uh, you hear them a lot in the deep woods. In fact, the owl surveyors get kind of tired of hearing them because they call a lot. In the springtime, they're extremely vocal. In wintertime, not so much, but they will respond if you play a call. If you play a northern sawwit call, they will frequently call back. So that's how you find them. And they're named for this rather strange sound that they sometimes make. That is supposedly, this sounds like the noise made by someone sharpening a saw uh, with a saw whet. Not a sound very many people are really familiar with nowadays, but that's how they got their name. And uh, they will re respond to that sometimes. Uh, I'm not sure what that call signifies, but I've heard it here a few times. All right, here's another strictly nocturnal bird of the deep woods. Bouncing ball cadence. That is the western screech owl. They don't screech. Eastern screech owls screech. Western screech owls toot and they do typically that uh, that little bouncing ball pattern. And they're fairly abundant in the woods around here. Not so much in the Fort Bragg area but definitely down by elk. There's quite a lot of them. A pair of them uh, can sometimes get riled up and this is what they sound like when they're excited. So you could hear there two owls, one very distant, very faint, and one close by that was really getting agitated at the sound of that other owl. I'm not sure if that was uh, uh, getting excited about a potential mating opportunity or an intruder, but I've heard that trilling call many times uh, when we're owling on Christmas counts. Here's an owl that's pretty common down by Elk uh, in Manchester and kind of a little bit harder to find up here by Fort Bragg. <coughs> Distinctive sound that they make while they're hunting. <coughs> Nobody knows why. That's the scream in the night made by the barn owl. And uh, in places where there are a lot of barns, these owls can be quite abundant. They uh, have adapted to living on the edges of human development. They really actually do pretty well in traditional agricultural areas where there's a lot of rodents to prey on. Uh, modern agriculture is kind of crowding them out. Uh, and of course, we don't really have barns much anymore. That's why there's not very many of them around Fort Bragg. There's a kind of a scarcity of barns for them to roost in. And of course their original roost were, were large, old, dead snags, hollow, the hollow snags of large old growth trees. Those are almost all gone from the landscape. And fortunately for barn owls, they have figured out a substitute for that. Nest in barns. So there's a sound that's rarely heard in the woods anymore. Uh, these guys have become kind of scarce. Like the great horned owl, this is four notes, but it's very different sound. That is the northern spotted owl of great fame. And they're a strictly nocturnal owl. They used to respond if you would play calls in their territory quite readily. Uh, nowadays, they don't so much. They're getting harder and harder to find. Uh, their, their numbers are diminishing, and they're also getting less vocal 
because their territory has been invaded by a rival who sounds like this. that loud that's the barred owl you've probably heard about uh, an invader that came from the east got here apparently under its own volition wasn't transported here it just showed up on the west coast in the 1980s and quickly spread both north and south and is now found from british columbia all the way down through california and uh, they have found the altered forests of the pacific coast very much to their liking and you can find them because they vocalize readily. Uh, you usually don't even have to call for them because at uh, just about full darkness, they're a, they're a nocturnal owl. But when it first becomes completely pitch dark, they will call like crazy and kind of announce their intentions to the world. And they also tend to vocalize just before dawn while it's still completely dark. Uh, before it starts getting light. So sometimes you don't even have to play calls for these things. And if you do play a call, you want to be kind of careful. They frequently won't vocalize uh, back to you. They will come and fly right at you. And in fact, if you're too close to their nesting territory, they, they will attack you. They have been known to attack humans. So you got to be a little bit careful about playing calls in barred owl territory. Yeah, believe it or not, that is, <laughs> that's the barred owl as well. That's a pair of them uh, doing some kind of mate calling. Uh, not sure just what that means, but it uh, you can hear it sometimes in the canyons in the woods around here. And uh, generally you hear that one in the springtime. Uh, but sometimes they start getting really vocal after the solstice when the uh, days start to get longer and the nights get shorter. Well, that's it for the nighttime owls. This little guy uh, is one, unlike most of the others, this one is more often seen than heard, at least around here in the wintertime. They do have a call, which I'm not sure I've ever heard on the coast. Sounds almost like a rooster, doesn't it? And you could hear songbirds in the background, so they, they will actually call in the daytime. This is the burrowing owl, and they are actually an owl that is active both day and night. They don't tend to hunt during the daytime. They do just what this guy is doing. They stand outside of their burrows uh, and just kind of watch the world go by. So if you're lucky, you can happen across one standing in the driftwood piles. They uh, come down here sometimes in very small numbers and winter here, just maybe two or three of them on the Mendocino coast, uh, frequently in these burned out piles of driftwood logs at the mouths of rivers. If you happen to be walking through and flush one, you might hear this alarm call. They make that when you get too close for comfort. Well, that's it for the owls on the Mendocino coast. Uh, there are a couple of other very rare species, but there's no point in wasting time on them because they're very unlikely to be found. And if you do find them, you're going to know what they are when you find them. Here we are at sunrise over the city of Fort Bragg on a Christmas bird count. And it's time to put away the owling and get ready for the birding. Hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, Hope you can find and identify some owls on the Christmas count or at any other time of the year. See you out there.